Good evening, YouTube. This is Chris Green again at Outdoor Power Tech. Uh, you will have to excuse the sound in the background. I've got my heater going. It's about 32 degrees today. And so, uh, customer brought this home light super tuned in for me to work on. And um, he said uh, once it warms up, it wants to cut off. And uh, also, he said if he turns on its side or completely, completely tilts it backwards. He wants to cut off, so let's get into this today, see what's going on. Uh, he already had a little shroud here that goes over your carburetor where your choke is. He already had that off, so uh, let's get started. We're going to start off with, you got one, two, three, four, five sixteenths. Let's take those off. Set those two aside like always. These 5 sixteenths also uh, have a slot for a straight screwdriver. Also, set those two aside. There's four of them. And then up here on the top, your handle has a 5 sixteenths also. So we'll be taking that off. Set that to the side. All right, and this whole assembly right here slides off, like so. Your handle slides off. Then your recoil assembly slides off, like so. That's what the back side looks like. Just very simple. Shroud with your recoil. Just set that to your side. Now. If I remember correctly, this whole assembly slides out of your housing to get to your carb and everything. So what we're going to want to do is turn around to this side. And as you'll see, we'll have a 7 16th nut here. That's, that's where you tighten your blade up. We're going to go ahead and just completely take it off. Don't lose it. Set it with your other ones. Then just pull your shroud off here. Plate, whatever you want to call it. Your chain plate. There we go. That's what she looks like. She goes on this exact same way. We'll set that to the side. We'll get all this stuff cleaned up when we're done, put it right together. Pull your bar and chain off. We'll do this sir. Pull the bar off. Then we'll get up in here where your chain's at. And pull your chain off. Alright, let's set this to the side. Okay, let's see here. You got two screws on the top and two screws on the bottom. Right here and right here. Let's start on the bottom ones. Hopefully they're not hard to come out. Yeah, okay. If they're hard to come out, you can set a screwdriver on it, like so, and put a lot of pressure and tap on your hammer as you turn. And you want to turn right when you hit it. But, man, I got a small impact. We'll use the impact. Small impact works great. Just make sure you apply a lot of pressure. There 
good. Okay. Do not lose these screws. Alright, then we got the two on the top. See them? Get those. Now, I'm going to see if, see here. Let's unplug your switch. There's an L connector on this. This one, the bottom one, runs to your switch. Right here, the bottom one. I'll show you. We'll pull it out. Okay. Now we'll pull this up and around and get it out of the way. So it don't get hung on nothing. Now, we should be able to pull this assembly out. It's been a while since I worked on one this old. Let me see here. Let's see if we can pop this. I think we have to pop this off. That's the way you're supposed to do it, but there we go. Whoop. Okay. I'll show y'all how to put this all back together. One, two, three. Be careful, cause your linkage here for your trigger, your throttle trigger, will pop out of that. We'll set all that to the side and your trigger. All right. If you can see this piece right here, you just pull it up. Hope y'all can see that. I'm gonna get the flashlight. See there's two little nubs right here. All you have to do is pull this up and let it go down in there. I forgot. Out. There we go. All right. Don't forget to pull your spark plug out. Then everything will slide out like so. Sure we don't lose that. Set that to the side. And we'll pull your air filter out. Set it to the side. 
All right, we'll turn us this way. I'm gonna raise y'all up so y'all can see. We got two. Let's go ahead and pull this. There's a little shroud right here that holds your air filter off the bottom of that. We got two. Looks like five sixteenths again. Or it can be you can use a straight screwdriver. Somebody's wallowed that out already. Let's uh try our socket. Okay. I'll try doing this without pulling this whole assembly out. Right. I might as well. Okay. That's what your assembly looks like, your housing. Pretty much I have to take everything off this freaking thing just to get to the carburetor all right you got a vent hose right here leading to your fuel it is connected right here Let me flash light and show you it's connected right here on the bottom side of the on this side of the carburetor right here I'm gonna try to Okay, she slid off just fine, which is good. We'll set this tank to the side. I might as well clean all this stuff since it's, I'm having to pretty much take it all apart anyways. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew my two 5 sixteenths right here on the car. I might see if I got another one to replace this one because it's... I doubt I will though. We'll unscrew both of these. Alright. This is what it looks like. And I don't think it matters which way it goes. It's going to be doing the same thing when we put it back on. We'll be in the same position either way. Okay, now. Let's see if this car is going to come loose. Now, I'm not putting much, no pressure hardly on here, guys. I just want to do that until it pops. We'll go ahead and set this to the side two that come off of the linkage. We'll go ahead and pull this linkage out. I'll get y'all in here too so y'all can see what it looks like. And this is how I'm going to take it off right here. Set that to your side. Just pull her off. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook this oil reservoir. The bar and chain. I might replace those lines for that guy too. This top line goes to the closest to the carburetor. And the bottom line, there's a bottom line down here, goes to the nipple feathers from the carburetor, so the back one. Alright. Pull that off and set that to the side. 
All right. Now, this gas line. No, that's a, that's the oiler line. We want to do nothing with that. I wonder if I should go ahead and replace it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. I'm gonna replace that for him too because it looks like it's getting bad. Might as well. All right. Now we can pull this. I wasn't wanting that to happen, but this whole gasket to the block has wanted to come off with it and has ripped. So, all that looks good. All right. I'm going to stuff a piece of rag down in here so nothing gets down in it. All right, we'll set that to the side. I'll probably put that in my parts washer and clean, just clean it up real nice and neat. Get our workspace cleaned up. I'm going to have to replace all this. Anyways, let me go to my parts washer. I'm going to wash this up and blow it off. And I'll be right back. Just give me one minute. Okay. I'm not going to pull this block off, this manifold until I know I can get a gasket for both sides because if I can't get a gasket for both sides then I'll have to see what I can do to either I'll make a gasket for this or I'll most likely make a gasket for this um, but like I said I'm not going to pull that off until I know for sure so let's get to opening up the top of this carburetor If I can zoom y'all in a little bit. Oh, that wasn't even tight. That could have been one of the issues. It wasn't even snug. Yeah. Alright. Let's see what we got here. Looks okay to me. Let's pull these top ones off. Where your diaphragm's at. Be very careful not to lose these screws. Especially if you don't have any, especially if you don't do this for a living and you don't have any spare ones in stock. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going barely, barely gently. Tell this has been on here a long time. Yep, that's probably the original diaphragm. Hard as a rock. 
hope y'all can hear that over the heater in here. You hear it hard as a rock. Alright. I'm trying to do this so y'all can see it too. Yeah, that has to be the original one. It is. It's okay to tear it if it's like that because you, you're not going to, you're not going to reuse that. That looks really clean. If you clean this with a razor blade, don't dig into the block, the aluminum block. What I try to do is get as much off as possible and then I'll hit it with my wire wheel. Let me get a Ziploc bag real quick. I'm going to put all this in a Ziploc bag so I don't lose it because it's going to be sitting here for a couple days until I get the kit in if I can get the kit hopefully I can get the kit that's hard also or it's getting there yeah it's hard it's hard also I'm gonna step away from the camera for a minute just real quick so I can look up online real quick if I can get this part or through any of my distributors and I'll be back if I can get all these gaskets, then we'll tear it down the rest of the way. Alright guys, I looked it up and I can get the parts for this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the gaskets off of here. I'm going to set this to the side. Uh, no, matter of fact, I'll put it in a Ziploc bag. I'll clean it tomorrow. got two screws on the top of here. I'm going to go ahead and take those off. There we go. I had to get a pick under it. I wouldn't pull that off, but the gasket comes with it, so. It comes with a new needle and spring, too. Don't lose this needle and spring. Especially if you're not getting a kit. That's what the back looks like. Go ahead and scrape that off. 
course I'll clean that up with my wire wheel. I'm going to soak this and brush out with a brass brush that I have, brush all this out. And one thing you want to make sure is that none of this goes down inside the carb. So I'm going to get all this cleaned up. And then when the gaskets and everything come in, we'll start putting her back together. I'm going to get all this out and everything. Alright, appreciate it. be back in a minute for y'all. Alright guys, my kit came in. So we're going to go ahead and start working on getting this rebuilt. I went ahead and cleaned up the rest of the chainsaw. Uh, I mean, I didn't you know, do a real good job on it, per se, but I just got up all the, all the oil off of most of it, all the chunks of dirt and stuff like that, just so it'll be a little cleaner to work with. I went ahead and put the lines, gas lines in my gas tank. If you tear it into a chainsaw this deep, you probably uh, know how to put gas lines in. Um, but if you don't, there's there's piles of YouTube videos. I'll, maybe I'll make one one day for everybody. But one thing that will help you out if you do put your gas lines in, there's a tool that has a hook on the end like this. And you cut your gas line at an angle like, like, like so. So it'll be wide and then get real, real skinny. And then you run this through the hole in your tank either through the lid or through the hole that the gas line goes through and pull it out and you hook your gas line to it like you hook it in like this if you can see and just hook it so it's so it's hooked to the so it's hooked to the end of your gas line and then you pull it through I forgot where I got this I think I got it in a kit a long long time ago but if you don't have this, it's going to be really hard on some jobs to get gas lines pulled through. But I went ahead and placed the gas lines on my gas tank and put a new filter in it and also my oil tank. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on this. We're going to go ahead and pull. I done cleaned it up real good. We're going to go ahead and pull the fuel filter out that's inside the carburetor let's see if we can zoom in on this for you okay make sure there's no dirt or anything in there Make sure she's real clean. All right. Oh yeah, I went ahead and made my gasket too. This intake gasket. Uh, I looked it up online. I mean, this gas, this intake gasket is like ten, fifteen dollars. So I like screw that. I'm not going to do that. So I made made a gasket. You can get gasket material at. Um, Napa, Napa, yeah, Napa's where I got it. I buy it in rolls, but um, that's going to work out just perfect, as you can see. All right, now let's start working on this side first. Hopefully, my hand won't get in y'all's way too much. Out. Don't lose any pieces from it. I'm going to get the filter. I'm just going to barely gently set it in there. And you can use the end of a drill bit or you can use a pick and just push down on the sides to get it in place. Just make sure that it's in there evenly all the way around. I'm 
like so. All right, now let's get our next gasket. Let's see here, where's my lid at? Yeah, there's my lid. Okay, get your gasket. I oh, know you gasket your diaphragm. Probably, probably going to have to trim just a little bit off of it because the head gasket and the intake gasket that's on is holding it off a little bit. You won't do this if you pull that whole intake off. Now, always remember your diaphragm goes on before your gasket. Y'all can see, like so. Make sure all your holes line up for where your screws and everything goes through. And then you're going to want to get your gasket. That goes on. Finally warmed up here a little bit. I mean, winter's not completely over, but I think we're going to hit 65, 70 degrees today. Everything should line up like that. And this, there's two little pins on this, and they go through that hole and that hole. So you can't put it, you can't put it on backwards, guys, on this. Just push it on, make sure everything lines up good. If you happen to push down real hard to get it to go in, then your diaphragm or your gasket's not lined up. All right, guys, let's get a screw that holds the plate on. And it is a flat head. Get her pretty snug. I can't believe this thing was running when it came in because these 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 screws wasn't even tight. I mean, they were loose. All right, let's go get to the. This side. Let's see here. Okay, there's two gaskets came with this kit because for two different ones. And this is the one. This is the one we're looking for. You'll just have to get your gasket and match it up with your old one. As you can see, this one has two grooves right here and one straight there and one diagonal. That's the one we want. I 
I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. Sorry about that. I had it just sitting at the wrong place. So see, you want them to match up perfectly, like so. All right, now. All right, guys, you see this notch right here? Your gasket is gonna have a notch. It's gonna have a nipple sticking out like that. And there's only one sticking out on this gasket. So when you put it in, make sure that it looks like this. It can only go in two ways this way or upside down because that nipple has to go in that groove and this is what you want to look at this is your intake manifold this is your where your air comes in where your air filter is to give you an idea of what orientation this is okay spring and our screw now you'll have a couple different screws in here so you'll have to remember which one it is and I'll show you which one it is sorry about that We've got two screws. You have two of these and should have four other ones left, which will put your plate on over your meter and diaphragm. All right. This one came with a new needle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on like so. It's going to be a little, a little more difficult than a normal carburetor. I'm trying to do this so y'all can see it too. Okay, get your spring and set it in here. Like so. Just whatever you do, don't get aggravated with it. You have all day. Make sure, make sure this is facing this way. See that little indention on the top of here? On the bottom side, there's a nipple sticking out and that's what your spring's gonna go on when you push, put it down. So I'm gonna hold that together like this. And I'm going to Okay, you won't be able to see this on here, but my spring's kind of cockeyed. It didn't get on that nipple. But since I have this all semi put together and got pressure on it, I'm going to get my pick and very gently push that, push that spring over to where it's in there like so see it should be working just like this let's see if I can zoom this if 
paar sluitingen. Oh ja. Okay. All right. Get your two screws and put them in. Get one side just snug, not tight. Then get the other one snug, like so. And then we're going to get them tight. Just use common sense on this. You don't want to over tighten it to where you you strip it. Okay. Now. Let's get our diaphragm, put it on. Let's see here. Gasket goes on first, okay? And it can only go on one way. Same as your diaphragm, it can only go on one way. like so okay okay guys one more thing I was wanting to show you before you put this on your gasket and everything get a gas iron hook into the bottom here and blow through it if you can't blow through it you got a good seal and then while you blow and push down right here where your meter metering diaphragm pushes down and if air comes through then and when you let off you can't blow air through you got a good seal on your nail and seat now, once you put once you put your metering diaphragm on and your case, put your cover on, screw it down. If you blow through this and air can blow through it, then you need to adjust your needle linkage or lever, whatever you want to call it. And it's right here. You want to get you a screwdriver and place right here and push down, bend it down just a little bit. What you want is this middle piece of your metering diaphragm, that little nipple, you want it to be barely riding on top of this, not pushing it down, just touching it. So. So you want it like that to where it's not pushing it down, but like if you barely touch it, you start to feel it push it down. And then once you get it together, once you get it all together with the lid on it, cover, whatever you want to call it, and screw down, you shouldn't be able to blow through it. Okay, alright, enough of that crap. Alright, let's get our plate. Same thing, this can only go on one way. Put your plate on, make sure your metering diaphragm stays where it's supposed to go. You don't pinch it, you don't get it on there and push the cap down on it and pinch it. You want it to be perfect like this, okay? Alright, let's go ahead and get it. 
get these screwed in. And I like to go on a crisscross pattern on this. Now I just had this bell housing on these two head bolts or these bolts, not head bolts, these bolts going through the carburetor to hold this gasket on on the intake manifold. That's the only reason why this is on right now. Yours is probably not going to be on right now. Alright, I'm going to save this extra gasket, keep it in my stock for if another saw comes in and I only need that one. Let's get all this cleaned up. Got a chainsaw block back over here. And we know that the chainsaw carburetor goes at this angle because your choke is at the top, okay? Get it lined up. All right. Remember when you're putting this on, don't use your small impact. If you are using an impact, do it by hand. Get one side. These screws are long, so can y'all see that still? Get one side snug, and then not too tight, just snug where where the screws touching the plate there. Then get the other side snug. Then tighten them up. Just use common sense, like always. Okay. All right, guys. All right, guys. I'm back. All right. Now that we got that all done, this line right here goes into your block right here is your oiler line, okay? It's the oil line that goes to where your chain's at. If you can see right here, there's a nipple sticking out right here. See it? That's where we need to plug this in at. Make sure there's no junk on it. 
I'm gonna get me a pair of needle nose pliers just so it'll help me out a little bit. Just don't pinch it too much because you can put a crack in it. All right, let's go to our oil reservoir right here. Now, as I said in as I said in the video previously, your bottom line goes to the nipple furthest away from the carburetor so let me see if I can get you in here so we got our bottom line right here the bottom line that's in your tank and it goes to this one right here I need to get it cut flush though and then this top one goes to this one okay bottom line here top line here Hopefully that top line will reach. It should. Alright. I know my hand's gonna be in y'all's way. I'll probably use the neo nose pliers again to help me with this. bottom one's done and now we're going to need to do the top one I'm trying to figure out how close this and they new lines they're going to be a little tight so you're probably going to have to work with it for a few seconds just to get everything where it's going to line up right. Might even have to adjust your lines here in a minute. Hold on, we'll find out together. Oh, Lord, I never had this much problems before. So it should look like this. Top line from your tank, oil tank to here, bottom line to here from your oil tank. All right, now. Pull this one back off. They go on. That's for 
Dusche. Just make sure you don't stab yourself. That's why when you cut these lines, you always cut longer than you need to allow yourself some room to adjust. Let's get it back on. Like so. Okay, guys. Let's get our gas tank on. And she goes like this. I got a lot of extra in here, so I'm going to pull out into it. Yeah, I made sure I had a lot. Okay. Your gas tank goes into your carburetor. It is the only inlet, it's the only nipple on your carburetor for a line to hook to, okay? Let me go ahead and get this. Cut flush. And remember your gas tank goes this way. There's a little bubble in the tank right here that fits in this groove cut in the tank once it's up together. So we're gonna have us some fun putting that on, probably putting and sliding it all look back together. Getting there, guys. All right. This is fuel cap, oil cap. All right. Let's see if we can get this to push up in here. Don't forget your spark plug wire needs to go through first. I think we slid it in at an angle like this originally. That's how she goes. All right, guys. Your oil tank will snap behind. It won't snap. It, there's not a snap on it, but it'll snap behind your flywheel. If that makes sense. y'all to where you can see what I'm talking about. I swear. There is your tank goes in like this and then curves this way. That curve part goes behind your flywheel. Okay? Then we'll put everything together. Uh, one thing we do need to hook back up is our linkage. I remember how it goes in. Same way we took it off. It's hard doing this with a camera. Let's 
so you're going to want to look like that where it connects into your carburetor. Then we do know that it hooks to here. You're going to want this piece right here to be facing this way once you get it hooked together in the chainsaw. See how it sits right there? It's going to be sitting in here like so, so it will latch. Okay, it's going to be hard for me to do this and show you all. So. We got to hold all this together while we slide everything together. Which is going to be a pain in the freaking butt. Okay. Get this piece. And go ahead and get her up like this. Let's go ahead and get her lined up for when we slide off thing together. This is probably gonna be the toughest part spot. Stuff it the toughest part of this whole thing getting this up in here without it falling off that linkage. Just have patience. Okay, there we go. Y'all see that, like, like so. All right, let's see if we can get this to slide in. Make sure none of your things get pinched. None of your wires. Okay. So everything should look like so. And that's just my two lines. That line isn't going around and being pinched. Um, Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and put my this piece on where the air filter goes. Remember, it can go on either way. There's no certain way. Just pop her down in there. Put our air filter on. That's odd because I don't remember seeing no air filter cover on it. I don't remember seeing no air filter cover on it at all. I won't go back through my videos and see. Alright guys. No, there wasn't no cap on out. I guess the customer has it at his house. Um, I wish I had one here to put on there for him. Yeah, I wish I had one here. For him, but I don't.
Okay. Everything's lined up now. All right. Let's get our four screws to hold it together and get those in. Hopefully once we get all back together, we did everything right because as y'all see, that's a lot of work just to do carb work on there. Don't forget about your kill switch, okay? It plugs in there, okay? bottom Now, uh, let's get in our switch. Switch. Okay, I'll show you the orientation of this chainsaw. Your switch is going to go in like so, okay? And it's going to go. You have to. You might even have to pick up on that and just set. You gotta pick up on it, push it to the front, and go ahead and put your throttle control in here. It goes in like so. Okay. Slide it down in there into its screws. Turn it so you don't see just like this. Okay. Remember, this is going to go in like this. Now I've got to figure out how this is. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so it goes in like so. See that? Okay. 
Okay. Let's install our handle cover. There we go. All right. Put our recall assembly back on. Make sure none of your gas lines or oil lines are being pinched. One of my lines are being pinched. That's why it's very important you as you're doing you just keep checking, keep checking, keep checking. Okay? It's not a big deal. I can I'll be able to fix it. Just get my pick. Pull this line out. There we go. That's why it's very important, like I said before, when you cut these lines, you allow yourself enough line to make adjustments once it's back together. Okay, this is how I have mine set up. I don't know if you can see that line under it coming out. Everything's tight and then everything's in a good position. Let's see if I can set something underneath here so you don't see. Can you see up in there? There we go. Make sure none of your lines are pinched. Okay. Because them lines are pinched, you're not going to get no oil. Or if your gas line's pinched, you're not going to get no gas to your engine. Once it's put back together. Alright. Slowly but surely, we're getting there, guys. I'm going to cut a little bit off of that because I pulled some through. Get this back down in the tank. When you're putting this old line down in the tank, make sure it's going to the bottom. Okay, it is. It's lined up perfect. Couldn't be better. Alright, now, let's put this on. 
Now, depending on if you have your cap for this, for your air box to hold your filter on, you might want to run your gas line under the carburetor and up. So. Put a, put a recoil cylinder back on. I know why that one was loose earlier. It's stripped. Damn, that one's stripped too. I want to do something about that for him. Probably gonna put a little bit bigger screw in there. Okay. I'm pretty sure y'all know how to put a chain on, so I'm not gonna go through those steps. And we are gonna put the handle on. Get some two-cycle oil, two-cycle gas can put in here. Make sure you put these in the right compartments, okay? Let's cross our fingers. I hope this works.
All right, guys, I did have to take a carburetor back off and uh, adjust that metering diaphragm that was flooding the system out, but I got it all put back together. I still have to order, and I'm gonna put it in the description when I edit this video, but on top of the gas tank, there's another hole, and there's a duckbill valve that goes in that hole that keeps gas from leaking out, but it lets air to come in. I'll put that part number on there, and uh, you insert it. Uh, if I remember correctly, you just insert it in that hole from the outside. But, um, alright. 